Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is the first day of October, the last quarter of the year, year of our Lord 2024. Much cooler. Heard that wind kick up late last night, or it was quite early this morning. Uh, but still a very pleasant day out there, a little overcast out there. Now could use some rain, uh, but I am not in charge of that. And the farmers are bringing their crops in, so maybe rain holding off for a few more days or so wouldn't be the worst thing. But I am not in charge. Anyway, once again, I do pray this finds you well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace to the last. Amen. It is good to give Thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight, according to the Daily Lectionary, we turn to the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew once again, and also to the Sermon on the Mount once again, picking up where we left off last night, reading from chapter 6, verse 16, through the end of the chapter, verse 34. Of course, this is our Lord speaking. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor thrust is, or, or rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you, if the light in you is darkness, how great is this darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you, little, o you of little faith? For, therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And that is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Little echoes of Ecclesiastes in there. Ecclesiastes was one of the great scrolls, the megaloth scrolls they are called. Read in its entirety in the ancient church, meaning uh, the Old Testament church. In, it, in its entirety every year, along with Solomon, Solomon and a few others. So you see echoes of that here about... You know, a vanity, um, and you're going to die. And you know, uh, I think Ecclesiastes is a little more blunt, uh, kind of in your face. Obviously, this is our Lord speaking, so he, he, he focuses us quite squarely on where our heart needs to be, and it's on him. You know, so uh, where he ends is where we're going to begin our very brief discussion this evening. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the days of its own trouble. You know, live in the day. Know that the Lord will provide for you. Now, he doesn't provide what you want. He provides what you need. Uh, it doesn't mean you aren't going to suffer. It doesn't mean uh, um, things are going to happen to you. We're going to, you know, sometimes just making it through by the skin of your teeth. Sometimes he does that. He refines us. He purifies us. But the point is, is, you know, seek first him. You know, live in him. Remember what you are. Blessed are you. you know, because yours is the kingdom of heaven, O dear poor in spirit. Uh, 
you know, everybody seeks after clothing, shelter, all those kinds of things. And God knows you need them. You know, keep your eyes focused on him. This is not the life we're going to live uh, forever. It's the life to come. We are heirs to the to the new heaven, the new earth, you know, the, we're the kingdom of heaven. But we are we are recreated in him and, and you know, people of the new creation. So and if we back up in this text, it's all about that, about what happens when you don't have your focus right, when you're worried about things. You know, and I'll tell you as a pastor, some of the most joyful, happy houses I have been into, uh, the most you know wonderfully pious houses I've been into, and and it and uh, to use a, a idiom that my mother liked to use, you know, uh, they didn't have a pot to in, and yet. Uh, Joy just permeated the house. Laughter. Uh, people had, you know, all kinds of jobs to do around the house, and sometimes it just looked like chaos. Uh, but there was this wonderful joy that you know, was, you know, pulsing through the house. Uh, the joy of being a Christian in Christ, knowing that, you know, and often when you have large households and stuff like that, boy, things get pretty tight. You know, little changes in the economy don't affect. Uh, 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 um, you know, maybe a, a smaller household as much really affect a larger household. I mean, think about it. I mean, you only have so many hours in the day and so many, only so many jobs you can work. Uh, and so you, you work and let's say you're a tradesman, you know, your income is not, you know, doesn't have a big potential for large growth. Again, there's so many hours, only so many hours you can work. And uh, anyway, you know, so that money has to go farther with more children, but still, you know, these God will provide, you know, and, and the joy that these people have. It's just simple. It has nothing to do with money. You know, I've been in houses where it's incredibly wealthy, but they're, 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 they're cold, sterile. Um, uh, uh, you can see the focus at times. I mean, you know, they're, they're wealthy people who, of course, uh, and, and uh, um, that don't have large families, often sometimes because God didn't bless them with one, that are very pious and very joyful and stuff like that. But it is interesting. Uh, my point is there's not a correlation between money and peace and joy. And our Lord is trying to teach us that. And if you think, you know, that if I if I go down that path where money is going to solve all my problems, you have an idol and it's not God. You know, so that's this theme that's running under this. You know, you're, when you're going to start looking at things the wrong way. Your eyes are going to become polluted with looking at things the wrong way. You, you covet you know, instead of just trusting in God to give you what you need, sometimes it might be just what you need uh, and just when you need it. Uh, but uh, you definitely, you know, will be joyful and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be anxious at times. But remember, he reminds you, you don't, you know, God knows what you need. He knows what you need. It, it is, it's a very interesting text. Remember, he is, he is this, this sermon is, yes, what we are in him. And how we live as Christians. And that is not, our focus is not on you know, the gaining of material wealth. People are blessed differently. And even in the church, there are very wealthy people. That's not a sin. Uh, but it's when it becomes our solution to everything, where God is pushed aside, once again, that is an idol. Um, you know, they, in this theme comes up, you can't serve God and money. Paul will echo that. You know, the, uh, uh, you know, the love or pursuit of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You know, when... when Obviously, we have to have money to pay bills and stuff like that. But when that becomes the thing that you cherish and love and pursue more than anything else, you know, it is the root of all kinds of evil because you have an idol. Uh, so uh, our Lord is reminding us, be at peace. Don't be anxious. You know, yeah, we see that, you know, he sees the trouble around you, but he knows what you need and he will give it to you. And that is just what you need. You know, so um, again, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, if you have great faith, you'll be you know, materially blessed. You'll be blessed in the sense, one, you're, you're dressed in his righteousness. You talk about being arrayed by Solomon. You're dressed in his righteousness and you are an heir to the kingdom of heaven. But according to his good and gracious will, he'll give you what you need to support this body and life. And we pray for that every day when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Okay. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For now you let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for deliverance against temptation and evil. We ask you to strengthen us in these dark and latter days. We pray for those who are addicted to substances and other things, behaviors, and those despairing of your love, that they may know of your forgiveness and your and find healing in, in your mercy. We pray for the tortured and oppressed, that they may be relieved of this pain and punishment inflicted by those, uh, and stop the hands of those who inflict such things. And be with each of us each day as we struggle with the frailty of our own flesh, our fallenness, and sin. Keep us ever mindful of your forgiveness that is ours for the sake of Christ. Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you for healing. We ask you to be with Kathy, Roger, Myron, Dennis, Don, Dave, Elena, Joanne, Betty, Pam, Donna, Dorothy, Pat, Grace, Angie, Robert, Ellie, Stephanie, Eric, Susan, M, Aaron, Grant, Joan, Benita, Dave, Bob, Jenny, Betty, Jeremy, Scott, Amy, Fern, Allie, Allison, Paul, Luke, Aaron, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Marlis, Clint, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Dylan, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Heather, John, Joe, Liberty, Don, Lori, Chris, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, Robo, Tammy, Joy, Tyler, Amber, Anita, Tom, Carly, and all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, according to your good and gracious will, place your healing hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your love, and the promise of everlasting life for those who bear your name. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you um, thanks for some of the word that we've been hearing from families and friends in the storm lot area. Pray that you continue to be with workers and uh, searchers and rescuers, that they may be your instruments in rescuing people uh, from uh, um, isolation and, and uh lack of food and water, we, we pray that you'd bless the work of relief workers, that uh, that water and food would be quickly distributed and power and uh, uh, roadways and transportation would be quickly, quickly be restored. Heavenly Father, we entrust these people to your care. All this we ask again in the precious name of Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day from you graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. Put your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn to um, 748, I'm but a stranger here. I'm but a stranger here, heaven is my home. Earth is a desert drear, heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland, heaven is my home. What though the tempest rage, heaven is my home. Short is my pilgrimage, heaven is my home. And time's wild wintry blast soon shall be overpassed. I shall reach home at last, heaven is my home. Therefore I murmur not, heaven is my home. What in my earthly lot, heaven is my home. And I shall surely stand there at my Lord's right hand. Heaven is my fatherland, heaven is my home. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.